Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Chris Biggs and today we're going to be out doing some mangrove monitoring at the estuaries around Port Aransas. And so we'll be out here with Katie Swanson, who is the stewardship coordinator for the NUR, and also Christina Marconi, who's a research assistant here. Alright, so we're here at Harbor Island and where you can see in the middle of the mangroves we just pulled up. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure we put the anchor down so the boat doesn't flow away. We also have checked the tides to make sure they're not going to drop too much while we're working and then high center our boat. So, all right, here we go. With all this vegetation, you don't have to secure the anchor too deep in the sediment. You can pretty much place it in there, it'll catch on anything. And then we're going to tie it off on the cleat on the boat. Go all the way around the horn. Come back, cross over once, and then on the second crossover, you flip the line underneath, and then it's locked, and you're good to go. All right, well, thanks for letting me uh, come out here and join you guys today, and we'll do some mangrove monitoring, right? It's a beautiful area. There's quite a lot of mangroves here, so. So, Katie, what exactly are we going to be doing? So, the first thing we do today is we're going to start at transect 5 and we're gonna start at transect five, plot one. And that's a 10 meter by 10 meter plot. Um, on the map, we're right here. Uh, so here's the lighthouse, we came in there. Okay. Um, and we're gonna hit that first plot and we're gonna try and find the four corners of the 10 by 10 first. And we're gonna mark them with flagging tape. How um, do you find, do you have them marked already? With yeah, they're out there. We have PVC, um, PVC and then depending on the plot, you're gonna have orange or blue flags. So I'll okay. let you know what color flags we're searching for. Um, so we're going to find the four corners, and then we're all going to kind of stand at the four corners, look around, walk around the plot, and then we're going to discuss percent cover okay. for that entire area. Um, and then within that 10 by 10, we actually also have five trees that we monitor year to year. They're the same exact trees, so we can monitor their, their trunk diameter, their height, um, how wide they are, whether or not they're growing kind of symmetrical or... Okay, so we'll measure a, those individual trees yes. at that point. Okay. And then also within those 10 by 10 meters, we have randomly established smaller 1 by 1 meter plots. And so we're going to also find those 1 by 1 meter plots, flag those, and then we're going to do some more detailed counts and measurements uh, within those 1 by 1 meter plots. Okay, great. So, so that is step one, is nice. finding everything. Well, I see we have a very high percent cover of black mangroves right here. But um, are we going to see any sort of other marsh plants that are in this area? Yeah, so we will um, come across some other succulent marsh plants, um, Batis maritima and Salicornia virginica. Um, and then we may come across some Spartina alterniflora as well. And then um, if we hit the jackpot, we may come across a red mangrove in a plot. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, Katie, so can you tell us a little bit about how you decided where these transects were going to go and how you set them up and what that process was like? Yeah, so we always knew we wanted to kind of establish the mangrove monitoring here at Harbor Island. Historically, through aerial imagery and um, just historical accounts, we always knew mangroves were established here at Harbor Island. So we knew mangrove monitoring Harbor Island. So to establish those uh, transects, we have the 10 by 10 meter plots. Uh, four 10 by 10 meter plots in each transect. Um, we established the first plot in each transect pretty close to the water, pretty close to the channel's edge, um, and then kind of went into the mangroves from there. Uh, we did not use GPS per se, and so as you can <laughs> see, the transects are a little, a little um, curved in, in areas. Um, so we basically would establish one transect kind of count out 20 steps, 30 steps, and then establish the next transect. So even though the transects aren't the same length, they all have the four 10 by 10 meter plots in okay. each transect. So how long have you guys been coming out here and monitoring these mangroves? We've been doing annual monitoring since about 2013. Okay. Yeah, so we come out once a year, usually in peak biomass season, so anywhere August to October is where we try to do the monitoring. Okay. So how fast would you say mangroves grow? Because these don't look like they're very tall. 
They are not. And actually, these are considered uh, shrub black mangroves. And so in other areas around the country or the world, black mangroves can actually grow pretty tall. And we have some of the taller mangroves here in Texas, but these are more shrub-like, and so they're called actually shrub black mangroves. Okay. Um, what kind of changes have you seen over the, the seven years, I guess, that you've been coming out here to monitor? Um, we've definitely seen an increase in density, um, especially in these smaller, kind of the lower um, height areas, the mangrove density has definitely kind of increased. Um, as they do grow taller, they kind of crowd each other out, and so you actually are crawling through larger mangroves, but there's less of them. Oh, okay. um, so did you notice any change to these mangroves with Hurricane Harvey or other storms that come through here? Well, since Hurricane Harvey had pretty high storm surge, um, and these are shrub mangroves, so they were actually underwater, and so they pretty much got through the storm unscathed. Um, we'll, we can show some imagery of taller mangroves closer to the Lydian Channel that um, you can see where the water actually stopped and there was damage to the top maybe three feet of the mangroves, but everything below where the water level was um, kind of came out unscathed and unharmed. Okay, so the wind is actually more damaging. Yeah, the them. wind was a lot okay. more damaging. Uh, we came out here I think two weeks after the storm and you could barely, besides the debris, you could really barely tell that there was a storm at all, at least in the mangrove habitats. Awesome. All right, so we're here at our first 10 by 10 plot, and I'm on one corner. I found this PVC marker, so we're gonna put some more pink flagging tape on it so we can see the corners. And then we have Katie and Christina locating the other corners of the plot, and so we can look at percent cover. And then back over here where we have this PVC quadrat, we've marked one of the one by one plots, and that's the area we are not trying to walk in as we walk through here because we'll be looking at percent cover and species in that as well. So once we find the corners of the 10 by 10, our next step is to locate the five trees that we're monitoring within each 10 by 10. And it can be a little di difficult, like a mangrove scavenger hunt, if you will. But they usually have metal tags on them, and that's what we're looking for. So we have A, B, C, D, and E that we're looking for within this plot. And then we'll flag it once we find it. All right, so now we are on three of the corners of the 10 by 10 plot. And now what, we just visually look and try to estimate the percent cover? That's correct. So I, like I see quite a bit of battus kind of sporadically around and I've seen one salicornia. I don't see anything but black mangrove. Okay. <laughs> Christina, do you see any open areas of water or thick pneumatophores? There's a little open water mixed with metaphors. Um, it's definitely dominated by black mangrove. Yeah, I've got a little open spot over here. Um, I saw some battus up front mixed in, so maybe about 5% battus. Okay, I do have some open water here with some pneumatophores as well. Okay, so we're thinking maybe 5% battus. 1% salicornia. That works for me. How much water do you think, Chris? At least in my area, I would say, I don't know, 5%? We have a little over here, maybe like um, 7? Yeah, I would go 7 or 8, because we have some over here as well. So. And then we have pneumatophores, which I would give it maybe uh, when all said and done, maybe 10% looking at everything. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, and then the rest is mangrove, black mangrove. Sounds good. Chris, can you give me a water depth? All right, the water depth is 17 centimeters. Got it, thanks. So we'll use calipers to measure the diameter of the mangrove tree trunk just by using this. And then we are going to use the meter stick to get the clear trunk 
height. So that's the height from the base of the tree until the first branch that has leaves on it. And then we are gonna use this. It has 10 centimeters marked off. Sometimes our trees are really big and it's hard to measure it with the meter stick. So we'll usually use this for the height of the tree. And then we'll also use this to find the width. Okay, so the first reading is trunk diameter. And you're, we're gonna get the diameter about two centimeters above the sediment. She's also gonna tell me if the black mangroves have a single trunk or multiple trunks coming out of the base. So this is a multiple trunk. So there's two trunks kind of coming up in a V right above the sediment. So I've done a little me measuring of mangroves in my time. And usually what we've done with larger mangroves is measure the diameter at breast height, right? Which is about one and a half meters. Yeah, about. So is this just coming up from the sediment pretty standard for these scrub kind of mangroves? Yes, yeah. Try to find the biggest trunk and you'll take that diameter. 20. 20 millimeters? Yes. Okay. Above? So the clear height is going to be the height from the sediment to the first branch that contains leaves. Leaves. Okay. So we're thinking it's this one? Yeah. 21 and a half centimeters. All right. And then I just need the um, canopy height, which is basically the height of the tree at its tallest point. Should we do here? Right here. Mm -hmm. You hold the leaves up and try to make them as tall as possible? Yes. Yeah. 91 centimeters. So the next measurement is going to be canopy wide access, and it's the width of the canopy at the widest point. So we're looking to see what all branches actually belong to that tree, and then we're gonna measure at the widest point um, the two branches, how got this far come apart they are. So this how far do they come over this way? This is a different tree? Is this this the is same the same tree. tree. This so is different. How far does it go for this way? I think this one actually is branching off, so it comes all the way. Okay. Well, so you think here. that's the widest part here? Uh, or here? Yes. Try and do each measurement, and if that's not long enough, we have the PVC. Yeah, I think we might want the PVC for this okay. one. There we go. Okay, so we want to do this side first. Sure. So it ends right here. Just about a hundred centimeters. Okay. okay, so let's try this way. It ends right here. Okay, my end is right here, so. What do you have there? That's about 105. Okay, so I'm going to mark 105 down for the canopy wide access. So the next measurement would be the canopy narrow axis. And this, this measurement's a little harder to explain. So we're gonna find where the widest point was, the measurement we just took, and we're gonna find the widest measurement that's perpendicular to that measurement. Okay, so, so it's you, not necessarily in the middle. It could be offset. Correct, but it's gonna go somewhere along that axis in 90 degrees. I still so think it's over It here. might be right in the... It might be the measurement you guys first took. Which means it's a pretty symmetrical tree. So... I think it is that first measurement. So 100. Yeah. yeah. So 100. And then the final measurement is canopy offset. And so it's the horizontal distance between the trunk and the intersection of the canopy wide and the narrow axes. So can I have that meter stick? Yes. So this is where our first, our widest point was. 
Correct. And where was your second measurement? Can you put that PVC where our second one was? And so that is the intersect, and the center of the tree is right here. And so what's the distance of that right there? So now, this. Twenty-seven. Yes. So Twenty-seven centimeters. Is that offset? And that measurement is called again. The canopy offset. Okay. So I get the idea of we're measuring the size, the width, the shape of the canopy to give you some sort of volume. What in the world could that tell you? The offset. Um, that's telling you how symmetrical the tree is. So if it's crowded, trees tend to grow kind of actually in a narrow. Um, they may have a very long. Um, what is it? Canopy wide access and then a very narrow okay. um, canopy narrow access. So that just helps you augment your calculations for volume of the tree and how much biomass is there. Correct. And having more accurate measurements. Okay. Exactly. Yep. And then the very last question, it's not a measurement, but question is. All right, so we're here at our first one by one plot within the 10 by 10 plot. And so what are we doing here? We're looking at percent cover? Uh, percent cover, but before that even, I want you to identify what plot you're actually at. Ah. So you're gonna look for a tag. There's a tag here that says 511. All right. I'm guessing that means transect five, plot 10 by 10 one. Yes. Subplot one. Correct. Okay. And so now we are going to do percent cover. And so we just want to look down and estimate. So we're going to do probably mangroves, nematophor, and an open space or water. Correct. And then any other species that you might see. I just see black mangrove. Yeah, I don't see any badass or salicornia. Now I think I saw somewhere like you don't want to necessarily look under stuff. Is it correct? You just you're, looking doing down? A, you're doing a bird's eye view. Okay. So you, so you are, don't have to be super hunter. No, you don't have to be manipulating much. Okay. You just kind of put the trans or the quadrat down and take a look. Yep. I only see black mangrove, nematophores, and water. Well. Yeah. And over here the it's a little thinner with the mangroves. It's kind of thicker through the rest of it. So what do you guys, what are your thoughts? I would thoughts? think up where it's about 26% open. You have this big corner here and that over there. How much of that is filled with nematophor though? Oh, you're right. Yeah. So Wait. I agree with that, but maybe split it between, between water nematophors. and nematophores. Okay. All right, so I'll give 13% nematophores, 12% water. We do full, yep. full numbers. And then the rest just star and could be from black mangrove? Correct. Okay, I have a sapling. The diameter is two. And 
the height is 35.6. All right, so to include the measures of um, pneumatophores in our biomass equations, we want to get the diameter and the height of these pneumatophores in these different plots. And so I'm just going to take the meter stick and measure painstakingly each pneumatophore in the plot. Twenty nine point two and five. That one is thirty five and six. All right, so to collect our pneumatophores to take back to the lab and work up, we don't want to draw from the plots that we're monitoring. So we're going to randomly select a half meter quadrat behind us just outside the plot. And for this, we have a very scientific method to randomly select this area, which is tossing it over our shoulder. So in addition to measuring pneumatophores within our plots, we're also collecting some outside the plot so we can take them back to the lab and dry them and then get their actual mass and so we can figure out a relationship between the size of a pneumatophore and how much mass is there. So I'm just going to clip these off down at the sediment. And put them in the bag for collection. Careful not to clip any actual mangrove saplings process. Okay, I just want more and we'll be good. 